Welcome to uh, the first part of my lecture series for the principles of microeconomics. <clears throat> and tonight I'm going to go over the production possibilities frontier. A uh, short notation for it will just be the PPF. Uh, after you view this video, uh, you should understand the following. So here the following are your, the objectives uh, for you to understand when you finish this, watching this video specifically understand what is a PPF and how it illustrates opportunity cost. In particular, I'm concerned with you understanding, number one, what the definition of a PPF is, two, what is opportunity cost and how do economists think of opportunity cost, and also the notion of what is a trade-off. Simply, a trade-off means that if you engage in one activity, by default, you can engage in another one. For example, while I'm videotaping this or screen capturing it is this or whatever else, however else I'm doing this, uh, I can't engage in other activities. I can't grade exams. I can't watch TV. I can't go to a restaurant. I can't play golf, etc. So those are the, the three things. Understanding what a PPF is and what it represents the concept of opportunity cost, which is very important for this course, and what do economists mean by trade-offs. Also, while we're doing this and we're using the PPF, there are two different assumptions that we can operate under. One is the concept of increasing opportunity cost, and the other one is constant opportunity cost. So make sure during uh, your viewing of this that you pay particular attention to the difference between those two assumptions because the difference in those assumptions impacts the shape of the PPF. Depending on what assumption you make, whether increasing or constant opportunity cost, that impacts the shape of your production possibilities frontier. Also, in particular, pay attention to the implications of different output combinations. In particular, output combinations that are inside the PPF versus on the PPF versus outside the PPF. There are very different implications of those output combinations. So make sure you understand the difference between those different three. The combinations inside the PPF, on the PPF, and outside the PPF. And also, we're going to go over some of the assumptions that we make in using the production possibilities frontier. So make sure you remember what these assumptions are, but also if these assumptions change. How does if I change the assumptions about the PPF, how does that change the PPF itself? So we're going to go over all these, but so make sure that beforehand you particularly concentrate on these four particular items. So when talking about the production possibilities frontier, Make sure you remember this definition. The PPF represents all combinations of two outputs. We're only using two outputs. You can do it for multiple outputs. That can be produced with efficiency. And I put perfect efficiency in here. I mean, efficiency and perfect efficiency, it doesn't really matter. Efficiency just means that you're using all your resources to their fullest capability. Um, and efficiency would entail, for example, uh, having workers who are not working. You're having a workforce that's supposed to work, a person's supposed to work 40 hours in a given week, and they work 20 and goof around the other 20. Or, for example, you have pieces of, of capital, different pieces of machinery that uh, you have available, and some of them are laying idle. You're not using the capital that you have. So make sure you remember that definition of what a production possibilities frontier is. Now, the assumptions that we make with the PPF, the Production Possibilities Frontier, is that all our inputs and capital, uh, I'm sorry, all our inputs and technology are fixed. We only have a fixed amount of labor. It means our labor, the amount of people we have working for us or working in an economy, does, it remains unchanged. So I don't see my labor force increasing. I do not see my labor force decreasing. Same thing for capital. My capital stock is remaining constant. 
I don't see my capital stock increasing. I'm not buying more pieces of machinery or building a new plant. I also am not seeing the destruction of capital, uh, things breaking down, etc., pieces of machinery that are no longer working. So labor and capital are both fixed, but also the level of technology is also fixed. So make sure that you remember that, what the definition of a PPF is, and two, what the assumptions are that labor, capital, and technology are fixed. This is important because later on in this video, we're going to go over what happens when labor, capital, or technology change and how that impacts the production possibilities frontier. Here we have a production possibilities frontier. For our purposes, I selected our two outputs to be beer and pizza, most likely because I'm the, the reason being is I'm quite fond of beer and pizza, so why not put two things that you're fond about? You can put any two different outputs you want here. Uh, if you're taking a macro course, for example, you might talk about consumer goods versus capital goods. Uh, but for our purposes, we'll talk about the production of beer and pizza. Important to note that by the definition of the production possibilities frontier, here is our production possibilities frontier. All right. And let me make a little fix here. Let me group those two together. And the PPF represents uh, different combinations of output that are possible with efficiency. So points B and C, point B and point C, are on the production possibilities frontier. Since they are on the production possibilities frontier, there are two implications. One, they are possible to produce. The combination of beer and pizza that is represented by B and C are both possible to produce, given the levels of labor, capital, and technology that we have. But they also imply that we are producing efficiently, that we are using all our resources efficiently. So remember that, that any point on the production possibilities frontier, examples being B and C here, represent combinations of beer and pizza that are possible to produce with efficiency. Now let's contrast that with point A. Point A is still possible. Anything that's on the production possibilities frontier or inside of the production possibilities frontier is still possible. So let me highlight the area below the production possibilities frontier. So this light blue color here represents combinations that are possible, but the implication is that there is some level of inefficiency. So this light blue area here, any point in here, but we're making note of point A, anything in that light blue area is possible but imply some level of inefficiency. We have workers that are lying idle, we have machinery that's not being used, etc. So realize that, that if you are on the production possibilities frontier, that means that it is possible to produce with efficiency and any point output combination below the production possibilities frontier is still possible to produce, but entails some level of inefficiency. That brings us now to point D. What can we say about point D? Well, if we compare that to our PPF, it is outside of the PPF. If the PPF here represents output combinations that are possible with perfect efficiency, point D means we are producing more than is possible with perfect efficiency. So this is impossible to attain at the present time. We just don't have the number of workers that are necessary. We don't have the level of capital that's necessary to produce this. We don't have the level of technology. So realize that anything above the production possibilities frontier, and let me highlight that area maybe. I'll make that a dark blue. Let me highlight the area above the production possibilities frontier. So this dark blue area represents combinations of outputs, in our example, beer and pizza, that are impossible to attain. So anything above the production possibilities frontier is impossible to attain at the present time. 
anything below the production possibilities frontier, this light blue area below that includes point A, is possible to attain but implies some level of inefficiency. And if we are on the production possibilities frontier, it is possible to attain, but we are efficiently producing uh, our output. We're using all the labor and capital and the technology that's available to us. Here I've drew, drawn in another production possibilities frontier. So this is PPF2 and we have PPF1. It's important to understand the difference between these two. All right. The difference between these two PPFs is the assumption about opportunity cost that I talked about in the objectives. PPF1 exhibits constant opportunity cost, while PPF2 has increasing opportunity cost. So if you see, or if I reference constant opportunity cost, if you see a straight line PPF, the assumption behind it is constant opportunity cost. If you see a PPF that is a curve, that means that I am assuming increasing opportunity cost. So make sure you remember that distinction. The assumption about opportunity cost impacts the shape of the production possibilities frontier. Constant opportunity cost means a straight line, and increasing opportunity cost means a curved line. So make sure you understand the distinction between those two. What I'm going to do here with this particular slide is review and explain, or hopefully explain to you, what I mean by constant opportunity cost. Let's assume that we are producing at this point here, that this company is producing no pizza and using all of its resources to produce beer. So this company is producing zero pizza and eight beer. So let's assume that this company does not want to produce this level of output now. Let's say it wants to produce a different level of output. Let's say it wants to actually produce some pizza. Uh, it has, it's going to have to shift resources away from beer over to pizza. So let's say, and let me bring this up for you, that this company decides that it wants to produce two pizzas and six beers. Okay? So if we take a look at this, what happens in order to increase beer uh, pizza production by two units? What was the opportunity cost of producing those two, uh, those two additional pizzas? Well, it has to give up the production of two beers. Before it was producing zero pizzas and eight beers, and now it's producing two pizzas and six beers. The increase in pizza by two units meant that we had to decrease production of beer by two units. So the opportunity cost of producing those two additional pizzas is equal to two beers. But let's continue this along and assume that they want to, the company wants to produce even more pizza. Let's just say they want to move to this point here, where they're producing four pizzas and four beers. What, in order to gain those two additional pizzas, what does the company lose? It loses, once again, two beers. So in order to gain those two additional pizzas, this company has to lose two beers. So the opportunity cost of moving from this point to this point, once again, is to increase production of pizza by two units. Once again, beer production has to be decreased by two units. So we see that this two pizza to two beer uh, ratio remains constant. Let's continue on to the next point. We can see here that if we move from four pizzas and four beers to six pizzas and two beers, we see that the opportunity cost remains the same. We see an increase in pizza production by two units, but by doing this, we have to decrease beer production by two units. And if we go to the final point here, we see that that ratio remains the same. If we move from six beers and I'm sorry, six pizzas and two beers to eight pizzas and zero beers, we see once again that the increase in pizza production by two 
causes beer production to decrease by two. So we see on this production possibilities frontier, regardless of where we are and where we move, the opportunity cost stays the same. If I increase my production of pizza by two units, I by default have to decrease my beer production by two units. So it's always going to be two to two or a one to one ratio. So because this is a straight line, we have constant opportunity cost. To illustrate increasing opportunity cost, here I have a production possibilities frontier that exhibits increasing opportunity cost. So I will take a look at several points that occur on this uh, PPF to illustrate that increasing opportunity cost. So let's assume that we are originally operating at that point here. So once again, we are producing no pizza and eight beers. So pizza production is equal to zero and all resources are being utilized to produce beer. The company is not satisfied with that and wants to increase pizza production uh, by two units. What occurs? So we move from this point here to this point right there. So we see that by increasing pizza production by two units, beer production falls from 8 to 7.6. So the increase in two pizzas causes beer production to decrease by 0.4 beers. And if we continue along these points here, let me bring this one up again. If this company decides that they want to produce more than just two pizzas and they want to produce four pizzas, what occurs? Well, they can increase production of four pizzas, but that's going to automatically cause beer production to decline. If we go from that, from this point to this point, we see that pizza production increases by two units, but beer production falls by one full unit. We go from 7.6 beers to 6.6 .6 beers. So the opportunity cost of two, production of two pizzas originally is equal to 0.4 beers. We move from eight beers to 7.6 beers. And then for the next two beer increase of production, the opportunity cost is equal to one full beer. We go from 7.6 beers to 6.6 .6 beers. Let's continue this on uh, to all the points along this production possibilities frontier. And we see if we move from six pizzas, I'm sorry, if we move from four pizzas to six pizzas, we see that beer production falls from 6.6 .6 to 4.5 meaning that the increase in two pizzas now is the opportunity cost of increasing pizza production by two units causes beer production to fall by 2.1 units. So originally the opportunity cost of two pizzas is equal to 0.4 beers. The next two pizzas that we produce, the opportunity cost is equal to a one full beer. And now the third incremental increase in pizza production of two beers now causes um, beer production to fall by 2.1. And now let's increase, show this. So if we move from six pizzas to uh, eight pizzas, and let me draw in this, I forgot to do that. And let me put the arrowhead in there. Sorry about that. So if we move from output combination of six pizzas and 4.5 beers, and we want to produce eight beers, that means we have to decrease our beer consumption to zero. So now we've completely shifted away from producing beer and moved all our resources to production of pizza. The opportunity cost of the next two, these two pizzas, is equal to 4.5 beers. So that we, what we end up seeing, is depending on where we are on this production possibilities frontier, that changes what the opportunity cost of production is. Originally, the, that increase of two pizzas only cost 0.4 beers. The second increase in two pizzas, the opportunity cost was equal to one beer. The third increase of uh, 
in pizza production by two pizzas caused beer production to fall by 2.1. And finally, that second, that last uh, increase in pizza production by two units caused us to decrease beer production by 4.5. We went from 4.5 beers to zero beers. So you can see that if you are on, if the production possibility is possibilities frontier is curved, we see increasing opportunity costs because of that. So as a quick review, just remember that the production possibilities frontier, the PPF, represents all combinations of two outputs that can be produced with efficiency. The assumptions that we make with it is that the labor, the amount of labor, capital, and technology are all fixed. And that make sure you understand the distinction. When I say increasing opportunity cost, the production possibilities frontier is a curve. When I refer to constant opportunity cost, that means the production possibilities frontier is a straight line. Now what I want to do is give you uh, some examples of if we actually change the amount of labor, capital, or technology, and how that impacts the production possibilities frontier. So here is our original production possibilities frontier. If I were to increase the amount of labor, this would cause the production possibilities frontier to shift outward. So let me change this to a straight line. So there's our original production possibilities frontier. If we were to increase the amount of labor, our production possibilities frontier, and I will label it PPF1, actually shifts outward. So let me draw in a couple of arrows just to give you an indication of that. So if I were to increase the amount of labor, the production possibilities frontier would shift outward. The reason being is if I have more workers, I can produce more beer and I can produce more pizza, depending on how I allocate them, right? So with a higher uh, labor, um, workers available to work, I can brew more beer or I can bake more pizza. Same thing if I have a higher capital stock. If I increase the amount of capital that I have available, the, the machines that I have available to me, all right, I would be able to increase beer production and increase pizza production. Also, if the technology changes, there's increases in technology that allow me to more efficiently produce beer and pizza, meaning with the same level, level of labor and capital, the technology changes and increases the amount that I can produce given the level of labor and capital that I have available to me. So any increase in labor, capital, or technology causes the production possibility frontier to shift inward. Let me draw in another production possibilities frontier. And let me make that a solid line. And let me keep the slope constant for both of those. So here is another PPF, and let me change the color of it. So this is PPF2. We would move from PPF0 to PPF2 if we had a decrease in labor, capital, or technology. So we have fewer workers available to brew beer or to make pizza. We have less machinery available to brew beer or to make pizza. Or technology has been forgotten or destroyed. Uh, that would all cause the PPF to shift inward. Let me bring that back to... on both of those. And let me make them both dotted lines to keep some consistency. And there we go. So if I were to increase 
the level of technology, the amount of capital, or the amount of labor. The PPF would shift outward. So PPF1 represents uh, the original labor, capital, or technology available. PPF1 represents how much we can produce when we have increases in labor, capital, or technology. If PPF0 is our original one and we decrease the amount of labor, capital, or technology available, the PPF actually shifts inward. I have fewer resources with which to produce beer and pizza. Now also realize that besides the entire production possibilities frontier shifting, we could actually see the production possibilities frontier rotating. For example, let's say I bought uh, or increase the amount of laborers that I had and their skill was specifically in producing pizza. This would cause the production possibilities frontier to shift out in this manner because these individuals only have skills that relate to pizza production. If I sent them over to beer production they would be completely useless. All right. Where for example if I increase my capital stock with regards to pizza production let's say uh, I bought more pizza ovens. Buying more pizza ovens is not going to increase the amount of beer I can produce, but it's going to increase the amount of pizza I, I'm able to produce. So if I were to increase the amount of labor specific to pizza, if I were to increase the amount of capital specific to pizza, or there was a technologic change specific to pizza, we would actually see the PPF I guess the best way to say is it rotates outward would be the best way to do it. Best way to explain it. So this is due to the fact that we have a labor capital technology change or increase due specifically to the fact that we have uh, that the change is specific to one commodity versus the other commodity. So our new PPF rotates outward in this fashion. All right. Uh, you know, we could do the same thing for uh, beer production. That way it would see it rotate outward. Uh, this could rotate inward. If we decreased, if for some reason half of our pizza ovens uh, broke, Here's an example if there was a decrease in the amount of capital available in pizza production. This would also be an example if I, for example, got rid of laborers whose sole duty was producing pizza. Uh, if I pizza ovens broke down, if I had some a fire and half of my pizza ovens uh, were burnt, I can't use them anymore. This would cause production possibilities to rotate inward because it directly impacts exclusively the amount of pizza that I could produce. So just realize that, that you can have a very generic change to uh, labor, capital, or technology, which causes the entire production possibilities frontier to shift to the right or shift to the left. But you can also have labor and capital or technology changes that are product specific. And when they are product specific, you end up seeing a rotation of the production possibilities frontier. That it shifts inward on one axis. For example, if it impacts pizza, we see a decrease in our ability to produce pizza, but that leaves beer production untouched. I hope this has been of some help to you. Uh, make sure that you review this and read the appropriate parts of the chapter. Uh, as always, I'm available during my office hours, which will be posted here on the uh, credits of this video. Uh, if you have any difficulties with this, make sure that you come back and see me during my office hours.